Okay, so here's some 4K 60 video on the iPhone 14, 14 Plus. It's kind of what you can expect. So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the iPhone 14 Plus Honest Review. Now I'm gonna begin by talking about the price. The iPhone 14 Plus is gonna run you $899. That's for the starting 128 gig, and it goes to $999 for 256 gig, and then $1199 for 512 gig. So definitely you are jumping up quite a bit in each capacity, you know, as you go up the scale. So if you're definitely trying to get more storage, you're touching those iPhone 14 Pro prices at that point. So this is gonna be, you know, something you have to think about if it's worth it for you, but especially if you go to that 512 gig, it definitely gets up there for some people. Also 256 gig, I think that this is a little bit high priced, honestly, for what you're getting. I think Apple should have went $100 lower on each configuration to make this more of a value because those higher storage tiers are right there. Actually, some of them are higher than the starting price of the iPhone 14 Pro. And that makes a sense why a lot of people think this might be not the best deal. You can get an iPhone 13 Pro Max for, you know, around the same price, maybe even cheaper from last year with 120 hertz promotion, triple camera versus dual camera. But there's a lot to like about this phone. I'm gonna discuss that in this video. I will say, I think at least the starting one is priced okay at $899, maybe not the best, but it kind of reminds me of the price of the 8 Plus, which was similar to that several years ago. And the iPhone 8 Plus, compared to what you're getting now, is definitely nowhere near as good. So I think you're still getting a pretty good phone here. But the pricing, I still think, should have been maybe $100 lower. So my honest thoughts on the design. I actually quite like it. You know, it has the notch instead of dynamic island, not as distracting. It feels premium, not ultra premium, like the pros, those feel ultra premium, but it's the light feel that I'm really digging. This phone feels, I've been using it over the weekend, substantially lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the same size display. I've really been enjoying that quite a bit. I like, you know, I don't like carrying around heavy phones in my short pockets, in my pockets, they just, they just, I'm not a fan. I know a lot of people say, Nick, bro, come on, man. Like you get used to it in a few days. You might get used to it, but when you use a lighter phone, you remember how heavy that phone feels by comparison to this phone. So I know a lot of, nobody's going to buy this phone just on me saying this is a lighter phone. And I'm not here to tell you what to buy. I'm here to help you decide if this is something that matters to you. And then you make your own decision on the sides. You can see aluminum rails. Um, they're pretty good. They're pretty clean. I will say the back definitely gets a little smudgy, but you can't see it too much except for on that Apple logo. And then up in here, it's a little bit cleaner in the camera housing versus the pros because they have like a glass behind there. So definitely quite like this as well. This is a clean, simple premium iPhone. And definitely I'd say the design is premium. It's good. It's not like the best Apple can do, but it's definitely up there and it's still not a cheap feeling device whatsoever. I just gotta say, it just feels like a standard 14, just larger. eSIM support only has been angering a few people, but I think a lot of people who have actually got the phone and seen how quick and easy it was with their carrier, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, they were in, don't really care anymore. And overall, you're getting a cleaner iPhone. On the side, you don't have that extra, you know, port. And I think in the future, the iPhone's just gonna get cleaner and more minimal as we go on. So maybe there'll be a way to get rid of this eventually, but not yet. And then maybe they're gonna be USB-C. We're gonna see maybe a portless iPhone in the future. I don't really want that, but <laughs> if they come up with a way where you can charge even faster and not damage the battery as much, maybe we'll see that. I'm just saying, I see Apple going in the more minimal direction with their phones and eSIM is just the beginning of that. Now, let's actually talk this display. Let me tell you everything I think about it so far. First of all, I do wanna tell you that the display itself is just about as good as most iPhones. It's plenty bright. It has the same type of color saturation. It has true tone, night shift, dark mode, and it's sharp. So. Really, it's not any different than most of the other iPhones in the lineup. 
The main difference everyone knows about is promotion. Now, how important is promotion to you? It's important to the people who have actually experienced it. If you're coming from an 11, if you're coming from a 12, if you're coming from a 13 and you just wanted a bigger screen, you never had 120 hertz, no one like that is gonna care. If you've had a 13 Pro or Pro Max, which are the only two phones before this year that had those displays, the iPads had them as well, some of the Pro iPads, those people are gonna care quite a bit. Honestly, it was a little bit jarring for me to go back, but I definitely was able to kind of get used to this and I haven't really thought about 120 hertz much over the weekend after like maybe the second day. It was that first day that was pretty jarring and it's definitely noticeable. So I do want Apple to improve it. But what I'm trying to get at, and I'm not trying to say that this phone is great because it doesn't have it. What I'm trying to say is that it's not really a deal breaker if you still want a large iPhone and you don't want to pay for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It simply is not. Um, but it's still going to give you that older iPhone look. I mean, we're talking way back. iPhone 4S, iPhone 5 had 60 hertz panel. So... Definitely gonna feel a little bit older in that respect. But what's nice is that for the people who wanted a larger than a 6.1 inch and they wanted in the lighter design here, you now have this option. And when we zoom in, it's the same notch experience as the iPhone 13, a little bit deeper, but also a little bit less wide than the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And you can see the overall display just looks good. And when you are in Apple News, for example, you are reading you know, an article or anything like that, everything does look super sharp. You're not gonna have any issues with sharpness of the text. Also, I was a little concerned the brightness might be a little bit too low, but no, actually it's not. At 800 nits and then 1200 peak, I haven't had any issues. Yeah, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is substantially brighter, but this is still a bright phone, so it really doesn't bother me too much either. It was plenty fine, and when it got triggered to auto brightness and sunlight, I was easily able to see this as well. So. It was good. I actually enjoy the actual quality of this Super Retina XDR OLED panel. It's pretty darn good. So let's talk about the software because we just got an iOS 16.0.3 update yesterday. Not much has changed, just a couple bug fixes. However, the experience of the software feels like last year because the notch is the same by comparison to Dynamic Island. For most people, this is still familiar and iOS is iOS. It's still gonna be the same update process, still the same app library same great app polish across the board and the same access to the same applications. There's no difference here in that area. So one area I always talk about is the cameras though. And I definitely miss that extra zoom lens, you know, software in the iPhone 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max. I was trying to zoom the other day. I forgot I couldn't do it. And I will tell you the zoom on this phone is just trash. Like it, it's garbage. Like when you zoom in, everything just becomes a blur fest. So definitely this is not the phone for zoom people. If you like to zoom, don't get this one. Video quality here, 4K 60 is good. You do have cinematic 4K 24. And I do like the improvement to the front facing camera on this phone in the software. Now, one area that's also different if you decide to get this over to pros is you don't have that extra format of Pro Raw, Pro Res. You don't get that here in this camera. This is your standard solid HDR camera from Apple with their cinematic mode, 4K 60 video, and an ultra wide lens. That's pretty much it. It's it, but the thing is, is that you know those main lenses are some of the best ones though. So you at least get the best main lens. You're not the zoom lenses aren't always as good as the main one. So definitely you still get the best main camera from the iPhone, so that's still good. Results were still stunning on this one, you'll see later, but other than that, the software experience is identical. We don't have to say much else about that. I haven't really experienced anything else different besides, again, the less smoother feel of 60 Hertz. Now performance, this is Apple A15, better thermal design than iPhone 13 models, and you know, some people aren't gonna care about that. They don't really notice the stuff. Their phones barely get hot anyway. A15 was already fast, but here's the deal. With the iPhone 14 Plus, at least if you're buying this, you don't have to worry too much about the whole A16 thing being so much better. I don't really see that. It's all down to the ProMotion display. That's what you really see on these phones. And come on, let's go use an iPhone 12 Pro, Pro Max these days from a couple years back. Those phones still perform fine. So this one as well, in the future, will continue to run fine. The only difference is, is you're gonna have to deal with its refresh. That's literally the big story here 
with this one. The A15 has been snapping through things, and I don't know what it is, but the 14s, even though they still have the same A15 as last year, they feel a little bit snappier. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if it's just in my head, but the iPhone 13 models, they're very fast as well, but they're just like, they just feel like a millisecond quicker or something. It just feels like they're a hair faster because they just blaze through literally everything you do. So we already talked about the software and the camera. You have a dual 12 megapixel setup here. And that's about it. And then on the front, an improved 12 megapixel front facing camera up here. Take a look at my samples. I took a plenty of them. I've enjoyed the action mode as well. I forgot to mention that. That's a big deal on his phone. Yes, you get the action mode. I really enjoyed that feature up to 2.8K over there. So check out some of my video samples, my photo samples, and let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 14 Plus. I would definitely pick this up for the camera if you don't really care about zooming. It's still amazing. All right, so I'm gonna show you this action mode on the iPhone 14. Let's flip it around. Here we go, action mode. It's kind of the stabilization you could expect. Doing about 15, 20 right here. Going uphill. Go ahead and flip it to the right here. All right, so I'm recording this front-facing video on the bike. It's kind of what the 4K24 cinematic video does look like. You can see behind me a little bit of blur action. Overall, the focus kind of stays on my face. And as you bring it in, you can see it still focuses on me because it has autofocus now on that front facing camera. So not bad overall. Okay, so let's talk the battery. This has been arguably the most important part of this phone for me. It's been stellar. Now, you can just see how slow it goes down. Yes, I do have some charges in between there, but that's because I was plugging into Apple CarPlay and it automatically charges. I didn't do that on purpose, but you can just see, just look at the bar graph right there. Look how slow this thing drains. This phone is easily a two-day phone for people who are not heavy users hands down, very easy to go two days on this one. 
I'm getting around like two to two to two and a half hours for every 20%. So if you do the math, that's around eight to nine hours of screen time on here. That's ridiculously good. That's almost iPad level good. So definitely, I gotta say, this is smoking my iPhone 14 Pro Max and battery life. I don't know if it's the lower brightness of 60 hertz, but Apple's claims on their website is not BS about having the best iPhone battery life. This one has definitely had the best iPhone battery life I've seen out of all of the models this year that were launched. Kind of reminds me of a couple years ago with the iPhone 13, or not 13, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, or even the 13 Pro Max when it first launched. It was also incredible. This one's doing the same thing for me. So this battery life on here, ridiculously good. Go for this phone right here if you want the best battery life on an iPhone 14 model. The audio performance, I tried the speakers out this weekend super loud, especially with music. Speaker phones are plenty loud as enough as well. Phone call quality was good, and signal strength, I had full four bars up there, and the Qualcomm X65 modem has been giving me great 5G reception and performance. There was a time when I wasn't getting signal and it was because I was around tons of people and probably the towers were getting mixed up, but. The deal is, is that overall, this has been fantastic phone for phone calls and reception strength. So Apple really improved that as well. We have crash detection on here and emergency SOS via satellite. So that's also another improvement. Face ID feels like face ID from the iPhone 10. Much hasn't changed there whatsoever. And I think it would have been nice to have touch ID, but maybe that'll be reserved for the upcoming iPhone SE fourth generation. We'll see if they put one in the power button and bring an off screen to that device. Colors wise, this is the red. We see it multiple times in this video. We obviously know that it pops a lot more. It's not orange. A lot of people think it's orange. Go look it for yourself in person. It's not pink. Doesn't look anything pink. It's just a very vibrant red, kind of like a sports car Ferrari red. For example, it's just very vibrant in your face. It's not the deep lipstick looking red of the iPhone 8 Plus or the iPhone 13 models of last year, which a lot of people think looks more premium and classy. However, it's a vibrant, vibrant red. It's in your face. It says, look, boy, I'm red. Look, look, look at me. I'm super red. That's what it basically says. And that's about it for the red color. You have midnight purple starlight. And this also comes in a lighter blue, which I actually have in the 14 model. I'll showcase that to you right now kind of like a Sierra looking blue. So a lot of people will probably dig this more. These are kind of like the opposite. This pops, this is more sedated, more chill. So a lot of people probably will like this blue as well. On the whole, can I recommend the iPhone 14 plus? And you know, a lot of people are not recommending this because you can get a refurbed or used iPhone 13 pro max, or even maybe some people still have it in stock brand new for the same price. And in good conscience, I can say the iPhone 13 Pro Max is in many ways a better device. However, I still really like this phone. And the main reason is really good battery life and it's really light for the size. I also like red and I wanna see a red big iPhone and I finally see one right here, but I wanna really see it in the Pro. So this will have to do for now. This is a great upgrade from people with an iPhone 10R, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13, who want a bigger screen. This is not a great upgrade if you tried out ProMotion or you have your eyes on the biggest flex, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, or you want Dynamic Island, or you want Apple's greatest or latest and greatest, what it, the best they can throw at a phone. This is not for you if you're that customer. Just because it's not for you doesn't mean this is a good, not a good phone. I was gonna title this video, Good But Not Great, because that's how I feel. That's my conclusion. This is a very good iPhone but it's not a great iPhone. The great iPhones are reserved right now for the Pro and Pro Max. So that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think. Are you picking one up? Are you not picking one up this year? I think this could be a great phone too for those who are you know, just trying to save a little bit on their carrier plan or they're trying to gift it to somebody, making giving a gift of an iPhone. It could be a great thing for that. And that's about it for me. I wanna hear your thoughts about this one down below. Did you order one? Do you already have one? Do you plan on it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's okay? Do you want more upgrades? Let me know down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching the review. I'll catch you all in the very next episode. Nick here and peace.